are you? I'm well. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm I'm super excited. I'm so honored. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and you've such an interesting background. Yeah, it's kind of random. Um, <laughs> so I am originally from Minnesota. Um, this little town, maybe Minnesotans know about it, called Webster. Grew up on a farm. Um, and uh, we didn't have any TV. My mom was a painter, so creative influences were al always available in our household. Um, and also, as we all know, in the Minnesota winters, there's not a lot to do, so you have to stay inside. So I got, you know, quite literally creative with my time. Um, I fell in love with writing and music really early on. Kind of knew I wanted to be involved in it in some sort. Uh, when I walked in here, I saw uh, my favorite Tracy Chapman record, and that was Fast Car was one of the first. I remember the first songs that I heard, and I was just like, one day I want to create something that makes you feel sad and hopeful at the same time. Um, and so it was records like that and um, the space to create growing up that led me to eventually move to Nashville, um, kind of get my butt kicked as a songwriter <laughs> and um, sign a record deal, move to LA for a little bit. And of course, as everyone always says, you end up just going back to your roots. So I'm back in Minnesota, um, about to put out a project that I really love. And, um, you know, it's really good to be back, so. Well, and signing a record deal, you kind of glossed right over it. That's a big yeah. deal. Congratulations. Tell us a little bit about that. That's amazing. Yeah, um, it's crazy. It's um, you, you, it's kind of funny because when you sign a record deal, you think that, oh, like, that, like, it's all done. It's all over. Like, I'm on the way to, the, to stardom. I don't have to do anything. No, absolutely <laughs> not. That is where the work starts. Um, and... It's been a lot of the 10,000 hours of work and like just getting ready, literally just getting ready now after a couple years to put out a project. Obviously there was a pandemic and there was a lot of um, forced self-growth um, <laughs> <laughs> that we all had to go, to, go through. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a lot really fast. I was, um, you know, still, it was still in college and as much as you think you're ready to take the world on by storm, I was still really young. And, um, you know, I think I learned a lot in the last few years of experiencing the industry in a way that I hadn't before. And um, now I feel like about when I'm about to put this project out, I feel just a little more, um, what's like the good way of saying jaded? Like, <laughs> you know, experienced, experience? experienced. Yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I've worn life in a little bit more. Um, I feel like I'm a little wiser than I was two years ago, and I'll probably be laughing at myself <laughs> saying this in two years from now, but, um, yeah, I just, I just, I've learned a lot, so. And how do you think that has an impact on the music? Would you, are, do you play some songs that you wrote a number of years ago, some from now, or is it? This project is, um, it's called Ghostland, and it's all kind of about letting go, and, uh, the ghosts of my past, and kind of like a memoir to the past, um, because all of these little versions of myself, I, I, I thought this only happened in our 20s, but I guess this happens throughout oh, life yeah. all the time, but you reinvent yourself constantly. Um, so this is, you know, another reinvention of myself that um, the cover photo for it, I, my mom took of me on my horse at like 5.30 in the morning. Oh. It's really cool, like, um, it's, it's black and white photo, and I actually found this old photo of me when I was, like, five sitting on a horse that almost looks identical to it this morning. It was kind of crazy. It felt like, wow. real, yeah, it felt, like, nostalgic. Um, but this, this project is all music I've written in the last, probably, year or so, uh, starting with Easy For You, which was a single I put out uh, about a week and a half ago, and um, it's really about letting go and being able to move forward with... Um, forgiveness for ourselves and you know so. and I think to kind of tap into because um, I graduated from college a lot longer ago than you did what I no way right yes thank so, you thank you so four years ago yes yeah Got four it. and a half but yeah okay, cool but what I'll say is that I, the the song is beautiful and it's uh, it's it's maybe that new nude but it it's, a, it's such a strong reminder because I'm like oh yeah. yeah oh yeah maybe I should make a list of the people I should forgive and I should start with myself and I was really yeah. thinking that when I listened to the music it's very uh, it, 
I don't know if universal is it, but it, it really kind of yeah. taps into that. Oh yeah. I um I read a quote recently that changed my life and um it was kind of about how everything can be taken from you except your perspective. That is when your last human freedom and that's kind of what that song taught me too. You know, like, and my mom has always given me the best advice in the world. Shout out, mother, <laughs> out there. Um, but she's always said, just don't care what other people think. And it's so hard to actually, like, take that in and really believe it. Like, it's really hard to. People tell you that your entire life, but you still care. Yeah. So. You you do. And it, yeah. I have daughters your age. I give them the same advice. You know, just, yeah. you know, and that kind of. Some people will really like you, and some people won't, and, yeah. you know, forget yeah. them. Yeah, exactly. In that song, when I had gone through this breakup a couple years ago, um, this guy would just talk mad crap about me. And I was living in a time where I was really sensitive, and um, I cared a lot what people thought about me. So even if it wasn't true, it felt true. Um, and... You know, I really had to be like, I really had to accept the fact that if everyone's human's experience is completely different, and if that makes your experience of this crazy thing uh, called life, then, you know, that's, if that's easy for you, then you, you gotta do what you gotta do. Like, we all gotta do what we gotta do to be able to live as freely and happily and stress-free as possible. So, I just kind of had to accept that and um, accept that I was going to have my own perspective that was not going to be affected by what he thought. So, I always remind myself that you know that person is living to their capacity. Totally. And we can't. Yeah. Can't shake that out of them. Darn it. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So. Would you like to play that song? I would love to play. That awesome. Song. Let me just grab my little guitar okay. here. All right. Easy for you by Anna Graves. Thank you.
lives. Yeah, it's. I I like the song. I mean, it, it's forgiving and it's, it's yeah. you know. You just have to recognize that in people. Yeah. 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 For sure. Absolutely. We're talking a little bit about your experience as a as a songwriter. You have been like mad professional songwriter in, <laughs> in a couple of di you know in in Minneapolis or in Minnesota yeah. in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. uh, in Nashville and in Los Angeles. Yeah. What are the differences? What do you What did you learn from each area? I mean, in Minnesota, I learned that I had like a complete love for music. Um, that's where it all started, and um, I played all these writers' rounds and um, these acoustic gigs. I mean, I, I honestly I haven't played live for years up until yesterday when I played Easy for You in a drunken Irish bar. <laughs> No um, better which place. was the best no way to get place. back into it. Um, but, you know, I kind of fell in love with the, the rawness of music. And, um, you know, Minnesota is obviously known for great musicians. And I, I remember even seeing Lizzo at the Ice House. Yeah. It was the best thing ever. <laughs> like, I, um, I really got inspired by a lot of musicians around me. And um, when I moved to Nashville, that's when I kind of realized... Oh, like you can be a writer for like this dream isn't really as far um, out of reach as I thought it was. Um, and I started co-writing. I started kind of just uh, I had the honor of writing with some of my honestly like now my mentors and uh, people I really look up to. And um, it taught me a lot. I kind of started learning how to record myself. I got a bunch of gear. I just kind of you know, I had this love for music, and then I started to really learn how to do it. Um, and then, you know, when I got signed, I, I moved out to L.A., and um, I then met incredible musicians who were from all over the world, and, you know, L.A. is a really big city. Um, and it's, you know, I just kind of had, like, a different... Uh, creative take when I got to LA it was a little less about the lyrics a lot of La Nashville writers in an incredible way are really get great at writing lyrics and then in LA I felt like it was a lot more melodic um, so I think learning from both cities really kind of shaped my songwriting in a way and I think I was really good to experience both and then coming back to Minnesota now is really great too um, because I'm reconnecting with a lot of people that like taught me the first things about music and made me fall in love with it. And um, I'm ready to start playing shows in Minneapolis. I, I feel like I'm really happy to be back. The only Good. thing I'm not like crazy excited about is the weather. I'm, yes. Um, yes. Yes. But I, I don't know. I think a Midwestern girl at heart, like it's always, I don't know, it always pulls at you a little bit. So. And when people hear you're from Minnesota. Yeah. What a, d do you have an impression of what they think? Yeah, usually when I'm in other cities, it's they usually say something like, oh, Minnesota. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, heard that one before. Or they don't know what to say, and they're just like, it's so cold there. And I'm like, yeah, it is. Those are usually the only two things. Or like, I don't hear an accent, and I'm like, okay, well, I mean, like, southern Minnesota isn't really that crazy of an accent. Right, you hear that no. before Fargo, though. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a different story. Right. But, yeah, I mean, usually it's the accent comment or it's freezing cold up here. But, you know, I don't think people really necessarily know how great of music comes out of Minnesota. And, like, that is, I don't know if it's because people, like I said, are bored and cold or what. <laughs> but, like, right. Prince, Bob, Dylan, like, come on. Yeah. It's there are crazy. a lot. There yeah. are a lot. There are a lot. Well, for folks who are kind of just getting started, what you talk about playing a lot of singer songwriters. What, like, yeah. how how did you get tapped in here? Um, I started. I oh my god! I the amount of confidence I had as <laughs> like a little wide-eyed, bushy-tailed little small like chill child. I would show up with my guitar and I would just be like, um hi, like, do you guys, like, need any live music? Like, I wouldn't, I mean, I didn't want to get paid. I couldn't get paid. I mean, I was like, <laughs> I probably know I could suck, and I definitely did suck. But um, okay. I would get paid in brownies. I guess you have to put an age on this. How? Oh, my God, I don't know, maybe, like, 15? Oh, that's, uh, it's so precious. 
14, 15. That's... I mean, I st- probably even younger than that, though. My, my mom would drive me. Because I remember <laughs> playing, like, the um, Minnesota Talent Contest. And, like, I got to play the grandstand when I was, like, 11. Ooh. I wrote this song about my brother, and I had this little sparkly dress. Oh. My mom dropped me, she curled my hair, and I just was up there with my guitar. And really, that was the first time when I was like, dang, this is pretty sick. Like, play the grandstand? Like, Macklemore played that night, and I was just like, oh, this is tight. I did not even place at the talent contest, but that's totally okay. That kind of, like, fed my soul. I guess I read that, and I got inspired right there. But it did. Like, playing live fed my soul because it was a way for, you know, I think a lot of us, like, we have these little hobbies that we love and writing was my hobby but then when I started playing it live like it was like whoa like you can communicate your stories through and people get it it's this weird thing like it's just it's so cool I think music is one of the coolest things on the planet well you make a case that there because generally you, I see music in a coffee shop or in a bar yeah. and being honest I see music in bars you know yeah. I, I don't yeah there should be more venues for sure. for, for younger folks totally yeah you know I I think there were more all ages shows when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. You know, I, th- I yeah. think it, because the band would play one show at six and one later at night. You yeah, know, it is because I think I think it's valuable for for fifteen year olds to see other fifteen year olds on stage. Totally to start off with, and then just totally. just all of the experience of it. But I think too, like I I grew up was very fortunate um, because you know. Mu- if I wanted to do music and I really believe I mean I was obsessed with music ever since I was little like I you know I grew up in a supportive household where I was able to you know my mom would drive me to gigs yeah um and I think it's really important like as parents too when your kid clearly loves something so much to like really allow them to explore that because I don't know what else I would be doing if I hadn't had that opportunity you know what I mean like there's right. only so long when like your parents just say no then you're like, oh, okay, well, clearly I'm not meant for this or whatever. Like, um, so I think it's like, you know, feeling like you're supported, and um, also you hear no a lot. We all know that, and you're broke for a long time. It's kind of like when people say, if you love someone something so much, you'll do it for free. And then you actually are in your twenties and you're doing it for free, and you're like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but I truly would not want to be doing anything else, and like, um, life is too short to do something that you don't love. So that's absolutely true. Yeah. That's absolutely true. But yeah. I mean, yeah, live music is important. Like, I really missed it during the pandemic. I, like I said, I haven't played live for years. The last time I played live was March of 2020. I think um, that's... It's crazy. Yeah. And I was in the studio for three years now, just making music. How... It, that must be a very different... I mean, you must start thinking about... To me, it's like swimming in a lake versus swimming in a pool. I mean, yeah. it must be very different playing, and then it, it, you must totally. have to build up slightly different muscles than oh for God. last night. I was last so night. nervous yesterday. <laughs> no one was sober, and no one cared, but I was like, <laughs> I was shaking my heart. I was hot. I was so hot. And, um, yeah, it's totally different. Like, you know, when you're, you have the safety of the studio, like, I mean, creating music cannot be the co- cooler, the coolest. Yeah. Like, there's nothing cool. I can't even talk. Yeah. Um, because you have a safe place where no one's going to tell you you suck. And so you can just <laughs> completely, like, do whatever you want. And then when you play live, you're like, oh, my gosh. Like, you're showing it to people. They're looking at you in your eyeballs. And you're just, you're like, ah, oh, like, wow. I don't, it's just, it's a lot. It's, uh, it's probably like when people, you know, make movies versus, like, you know, in theaters. Like, right. you know, doing it live. It's just different. But it's actually, like, in a weird way. You get so much adrenaline from playing live because you're proud of yourself and you're like, oh my god, I just did that and I didn't forget the words. Well, and you have to tap into your 15 year old self. You do. Yeah. I mean, I, can't I, I just that, think but that you definitely no one do. has more courage than you know, than young yeah. women. Totally. I have three daughters. I've seen yeah. them go up on stage with very limited musical skills. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you can't actually play that violin, yeah. Hawkin. I can't oh, even. I got it. Yeah, I don't even know how I did. I mean, now I could never. I, I mean, seriously, if I go and fill up my gas tank and it says go to speak to cashier, I leave. <laughs> like, I, ha- I have such social anxiety I, I now. Like, before the world kicked me in the butt, I, yeah, I could walk onto a stage. I went, I remember the first time I went to Nashville, I had my mom take me to Broadway and I walked oh. with my guitar once again, oh. walking into bars and I was like, hey, can I play? 
And they were like, sure. <laughs> okay. And now I'm like still friends with the guys who play at Legends. And like, that's amazing. It was, yeah, I think having the courage to do that and being like, literally nothing oh. matters. Like, the worst case, you forget. Like, I've all, I forget, I forgot lyrics. I've, my voice has cracked oh. live. I've, oh my gosh, there was this one time I was so nervous my guitar was really out of tune. Oh my gosh, I was playing my friend's wedding. Oh no. And my guitar was, it was really hot outside. And, my guitar got really out of tune because I was sitting in the sun, but I started and it was too late. And I had to play this entire song completely out of tune, oh. so I was playing the guitar really quietly. Like, I got through that. I guarantee you, no one else remembers that. Nope. Like, nope. so just live your life and I, go for it. I see I see live music probably five or six nights a week. I see a lot of music. Yeah. And I say, you know, the, I, I, could sit in, I could save money. Yeah. I could probably save some beer calories if I sat at home and listened <laughs> to the albums, you know. But the calories don't count. No, exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, but I, I, it's it's the time that things go uh, go differently. It's the unexpected. That's yeah. why you go for it. You know, it's when totally. somebody jumps on stage and sings along, or it's. Uh, yeah. And I, I, I will even say back when I used to write a lot more live reviews, give me something awesome or give me an absolute train wreck. Yeah. No, there it is. You know, give me something memorable. And I don't think yours are going to be train wrecks. But you know, I I had them. And I will I don't, will continue to have train wrecks, but that is a part of life. Well, and I think generally the audience is with you. No matter, like, yeah. oh, another string broke. She's down to one. Yeah. Well, let's see how this goes. You know, I'd be yeah. like, oh, I hope. I no, hope. it's true. I mean, it's true. Like, people just really want to. I think, too, like, one thing I've been learning is. Um, as an artist, I've, of course, managed to make everything about myself. <laughs> and it really isn't. Like, people just want to enjoy music and feel something and relate. And, um, you know, like, the reason that I love records like Fast Car and, like, stuff like that is you listen to it and you just feel a little less alone. And that's, I think, what great music is for. Yeah. Like, I, so I, I try to take myself out of it especially when I'm playing live, too, and I'm like, people just really, like, want to enjoy a bevy. Yeah. And <laughs> well, I, it's funny, because as you say that, I was thinking of you playing on St. Patrick's Day, playing original music on St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. In the wrong place. It could be a lot of, Danny boy, we want Danny boy, you know, and yeah. you get those crowds, I'm sure, you know, if, totally. you, if you play enough bars where they're, yeah. Led Zeppelin, play Led yeah. Zeppelin. And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, I mean. It, that's on them. Through college and through... Like, high school, I did so many random bar gigs. <laughs> like, I mean, th even in Nashville, too, like, getting a shot of tequila for... No, you oh. should never drink. You should not... Drinking nope. is bad. Yeah. 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 But it's just, like, yeah, so many random little shows, but it all builds your character a little bit. You know, puts you in your place a little bit, which is important. It is important. Well, it's because as you talk about it, I'm like, I could just... I could see the movie of your life. Yeah. I, now... For better or for worse, I hope that it's not that interesting a movie. Do you know, like, yeah. I hope you, I don't wish you bad times. Yeah. <laughs> just, you know, but, yeah. but that is the, that is the story of our lives. Those are the ups and the downs, but I can just yeah. see dragging the guitar behind and the sparkly yeah. dress and the, you know. And it's so funny, too, because I thought, you know, when you're, when you're a teenager, you have this entire glamorous idea of what the music industry is and what being an artist is. And I can fully say that I'm an artist right now because I have absolutely no money. But I have never been more in love with music. And it's so hard to explain. Like, it is not pretty. It's hard work, just like everything is. Um, but it's, you know, it's late nights in the studio. It's, like, midnight coffees. It's, like, a lot of loneliness because you're following this creative path and you, a lot of it's spent in solitude to understand your feelings. It's a lot of alcohol on wounds trying to actually, like... <laughs> yeah. You know, if... Because you, you can't write about something unless you really think about it. Like, um, you know, and it's... Yeah, it's really... It's hard, but, like, I've... I, I've never been so in love with music. And I've... This EP, too, is, like, the first thing that I've really created that I'm really proud of. And I'm really excited to put it out, too, because that's, like... You know, we're hard, humans are hard on ourselves. Like, yeah. we can say that we're not, but, like, we all are. And um, to say that I'm, like, really proud of something, like, that's a really freeing thing. And, like, you know, as a seven-year-old adult, I'm <laughs> right. pretty proud of that. <laughs> I, I think that's amazing because that's another thing we kind of lose after after the age of seven. Like, yeah. I did it. I know, right? I, off the high dive. I'm awesome. You know, I, I 
yeah, good for you. You should be proud. You should absolutely be proud. Especially when it's it's so much of your, I mean, it's just inherent in the music that you write, in the music that m most people write, you know. Yeah. So much of you yeah. on the plate. Yeah. And that's, really is. that is a, that's a scary thing to do. Yeah. But freeing. It's very freeing. And yeah, for anyone who loves music and is too scared right now to like go for it, just go for it. Because it is so worth it. And even if you're broke for a long time and lonely for a long time, it's just like the feeling of creating art that you love. You know, if you want, if you if you want to create art, like it's so worth it. You know, and I had no plan B, and you know, I you know, <laughs> well, I'm living in Minnesota right now, back with my mom at the moment, so I don't know how that's working out. But I, like I said, I, I've never creatively felt more inspired. So I think there's something to say about that too. There absolutely is something to say. Yeah. Would you? Like to play another song? Would yeah. you grace us with I another would love song? To, I would love to play another song. Wow, I can't believe I'm sharing all my secrets. Before I before I got here, I told her, I was like, so I'm probably not going to say anything about X, Y, and Z, and I just said everything about X, Y, and Z, so. I am going to quickly say we are listening to Anna Graves, on mostly Minnesota music, on WMCN, 91.7 FM in St. Paul. And we're going to hear another in-studio performance. I'm very excited. Just going to quickly tune up. Get it quickly tune up because we're in the basement and it's like a sauna. <laughs> it's like a sauna in here. Look, I learned my lesson after playing after that wedding. wedding. <laughs> I, I was too scared for the awkward moment of tuning my guitar. And um, not worth it. Never it's, worth it. No. So I've heard people say, I tune because I love you. <laughs> yeah, right? I care. Yeah. So this one's called Fade Away. Um, this one is on the EP. It is not out, so this is like a little bonus treat. But um, I have, um, I don't know why. I don't know if this is like, if a lot of younger kids have like weird, scary intellectual thoughts about death, but I always have been really scared of death. Like, and, um, I really can't explain it, but I threw out the sun to kind of just feel a little better about it and like feel like the life is truly beautiful and it's inevitable and just like the ride is a journey and we gotta make that journey worth it, you know? So it's called Fade Away.
so rainbows when I did it. I did it at the very end. I almost made it. It was lovely. Thank Your you. voice is gorgeous. It's just uh, that, yeah, there's something <laughs> about the nihilism in the song. I, it is a very, my, I have three daughters. One has always been a little afraid of, really? I'm going to send that song How to old her. Is she? How old is she? She's 24. 20. So, yeah, same age. Yeah, I was going to say same age. And she she is kind of coming to terms, and maybe you are as well, with um, just relaxing. Yeah. It's not a it's not a pass fail test every day. Yeah. It's just yeah, it's just so much pressure on ourselves. Yeah. And it you know, it's it's gonna fade away. If yeah, you've kind of nailed that uh, Tracy Chapman of it's it's thoughtful. It's it makes you think. It's a little sad. Is that you know? I mean, yeah. Melancholy. I sad isn't the right, but it's yeah. You know, it, it's. But the acceptance of that idea yeah. is freeing. It really is, yeah. I mean, honestly, like, thank you for saying that. Like, I in no way think that I am at all, like, up to a comparison with Tracy Chapman. <laughs> but I appreciate that because it was, it took a long time to write that song. I had, um, you know, it just, songs like that take time because it's like this huge big like cloudy question in your brain and I wanted to simplify it as much as possible for me to like understand actually believe it like it's gonna be okay um and I feel like sometimes less is more too with writing so it's like I was like screw a second verse I don't even need it like back to the pre <laughs> um but no thank you I'm really I'm really excited to put it out um like the whole project is kind of like this that big question for a lot of things so I'm really, really excited what is the timeline? Because you must just be I'm sorry, dude, chomping on the bit here. Yeah. Um, so Easy Free just came out. I'm hoping second single, you know, in four to six weeks afterwards. Okay. Um, I'm, you know, I'm with a label right now, and so not everything is up to me. And unfortunately, in a world of TikTok, um, it's harder to put out music, especially on record labels, when it's not flowers by Miley Cyrus and blowing up or like all over so it's it's tough it's like a but it's a slow growth um not really sure exact I don't release date but I'm really hoping in the next couple of weeks next two to three weeks I can put out the second single and hopefully put out Ghostland this summer because I'm really really excited about it that's awesome that's yeah. but I, I exciting but frustrating at the same breath I must imagine yeah it's all, it's really, it's all done. Like, just getting a few songs mixed and, like, we're ready to go. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's just trying to, um, it's a constant fight with social media. That's probably, like, the <laughs> hardest part about being an artist right now is it's, like, you have this, like, this yearning love for music. And then sometimes it feels like if you don't have the same numbers as, you know, other artists, then it's, like, you, it's hard to feel, like, ah, uh, I don't want to write the word for it is. Well, but. it's compare and despair. My friend Definitely. always says, compare and despair. Yeah. It's, yeah. So you I'm know. Playing the, I'm playing the socials game right now, trying to, um, you know, get a, get more people to listen to Easy For You so I can hopefully put out the next song. So that's the goal. Yeah, that's a hard go that's a hard goal. It's a hard I goal especially when I really just under, you know, this project just released my first single. Like yeah. I, I mean, I've been writing for my whole life, but like because of the pandemic, because of you know, music industry BS that we don't need to get into, right. it just takes a while to put out music. But I think interesting for people who might be listening who ha who haven't signed with a, a label, it, this is the frustration of it. Yeah. There are ups and downs of everything and there are great things that um, that labels can do for you, but the hard part is, is it's a numbers game. So, and I mean, it's, it's not even, like, I think the whole industry, like, kind of has their hands tied right now. It's TikTok is, like, like overarching yeah. all the entire music industry. And it's like, you know, I don't know if, it's like, it will easy for you be the perfect song for someone to, like, start a trend like for the x y and z it's just like it's so hard and it's yeah it's like it's this big thing that everyone i think i think everyone's terrified of tiktok and ai but i heard that you don't want to talk bs about ai because one day they'll be like controlling humanity and they'll like <laughs> right. they'll bulldoze right. the ones who talked to bs about it before so but the funny thing about it is you 
and I've done um, helped others do social media, social media marketing for many many years. And the thing is, yeah. you can plan and plan and plan and think you have this genius idea. Yeah. And then it's I used to work with a lot of resorts. And then it's the kid who catches the you know four hundred pound musky, and suddenly that's the you know yeah. It's just you. Yeah. You know. So I think you just keep. Yeah, keep the going journey is going. different for everyone. Like, you know, I mean, I got signed off of a few demos and I hadn't toured, I, you know, so, like, I think that was, like, you know, getting signed that felt like, oh, like, I, like, this is easy and it's, like, you can't escape, you can't escape the hard part, you just can't, any of this no. in life. You gotta grind, you gotta do all of it, and I think that just, you know, came after I got signed, which doesn't usually, you know, sometimes it happens differently, but, and then the whole TikTok explosion, the pandemic, like, it's just constantly maneuvering around getting scrappy you, know? you can do it yeah we you got can do this. it we you know, got this back in the day people would drive from radio yeah. station to radio station with the demos and and hope, and yeah. hope. i mean it's all I mean, I, is that easier or harder i don't know i don't know yeah, it's, I it's guess frustrating it's just, no matter what different. yeah 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 but it's yeah we can do this we got this yeah i believe you have the talent so let's let's see yes thank yes. you do you have any shows? Do you have any time? Any will you be popping in to play to more drunk Irishmen? Probably. Soon? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll I'll um I'll keep you updated. Okay. Good. Um, I just got back to Minnesota a few weeks ago. Okay. I um took me, you know, a, a week or two to get used to the weather again. I was gonna say you're just in time for spring. Yeah. Or for sure. Or winter this number is, like, two. The last cold day. Yeah. We never really know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I really do want to start playing some shows. Um, I'm really excited to be back. I feel like I, I'm, just, I'm, I'm ready to play live again. You know, it's been so long. So. That's great. And yeah. where, where is the best place to find you, for folks to find you? Anna Graves Music on the socials. Um, on Spotify, it's Anna Graves. Um, like I said, Easy For You's Out. The music video is, um, oh my gosh, we, I think it was November when... Um, yeah, we didn't even talk about the video. Then talk a little bit about because it's, it's gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah, we um, it was super honestly last minute, and I am so proud of everyone involved in it because it was a late November freeze. Oh my gosh, it was <laughs> ten degrees, um, and I had like just like you know a pair of denim jeans on, a denim jacket, and uh, this old truck. And we just drove around. Um, my friend Hannah and Josephine, my friends Hannah and Josephine filmed it. Um, it's all on film. It is beautiful. The colors are stunning. Yes. We, in one weekend, it was actually really, really sad though because a few of my friends have reached out to me. They're like, you look so miserable in this video. Oh. And I was like, thanks. But also, <laughs> it was so sad because on the plane ride, to Minnesota, I found out that my cat died, and so oh. it was like the oh, saddest oh, oh, oh. weekend ever. And I was crying, like I know it's like, like you have a memorial like, forever. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, like of course it, of course the literally as I'm about to land, like I'm like finally, like I put in all this work writing this project, I'm gonna shoot a music video, life is good. It's like, oh, your cat's dead. I'm like, oh, oh my god, and so I just it was like in between crying and like. Um, the sniffles the oh, whole geez. time. I had the sniffles all weekend. Um, and But we made the best out of it, and we got up at, like, 4 in the morning to catch the coolest light. It was so... It was honestly so much fun. That's good. So, yeah, the music video is out, um, and hopefully the next single coming up soon. I don't really know what I'm supposed... I think I'm supposed to tease it on TikTok. Well, so I think I we'll should, look forward to that. I'll be teasing it on TikTok. Yes, we got a little tease here, so we're, yes, thank a you little, for sharing it with us. Tease. That's awesome. So yeah, it'll be good to say that. <laughs> I know, I know. College radio, sorry you're, guys. You're, well, you're just gonna get a, a very different following than that you may want. That is very true. Yeah, yes, sorry guys. Talk about the strip tease. I, mean, I don't it, know. Maybe I'll get more of a following. I mean, you don't do you do anything you. for the numbers these I'm, days. No judgment. You do you, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Anna, thank you so much for coming. This thank has been you. a delight. So yes, yes, and we'll look forward to hearing more. Excited. We'll go back to record music. We got Ted Heineshevitz <laughs> at, I I can say his name perfectly <laughs> when I'm not on air, and he knows it. I've done it for him. Anyways, we've got Cut Out Ben. That was so fun.
Thank you so much. This was awesome. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah, you. yeah. A delight, a delight. I am gonna send that song to my daughter because she just. Yeah, it's well, it's on the EP too. 